we're sinners by nature. Our origin is of the fallen flesh in the image of sinful man. As such, we are under the wrath of a holy God, even from our birth. And we would all be lost if it were not for the sake of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Though deserving only death, God loved us so much to send his son to die in our place, to bear our sins and redeem us from sin, death, and the power of the devil. Through and with spirit-given faith, we are baptized into Christ. As Paul says in Romans chapter 6, we are buried with him in death by baptism and raised again by baptism. The old man is put away, is put to death, and a new man is brought forth. Thus, baptism both washes away sin and signifies burial of the sinful self, while pointing to the emergence, that is, the rebirth of a new person who is united with the Spirit of Christ. Further, we read that Christ commanded baptism, telling his disciples in the last chapter of Matthew that they should go into all the world, uh, uh, disciple the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. We read further that baptism holds a promise of forgiveness and salvation. For St. Mark says, he that believes and is baptized shall be saved. Thus it is good that in obedience to Jesus' promise and trust in his promise that you, Kyle and Stephanie, should bring Colin to be baptized in his name. Colin received the sign of the cross on your mind and on your heart. He told him that you are the redeemed by Christ the crucified. He said, no scary to me. I have a nice smile. <laughs> Let us pray. <clears throat> Almighty eternal God, Father and Lord Jesus Christ, we pray you bestow upon Colin Lee Zapali, here presented for holy baptism, your everlasting grace, through regeneration by the Holy Spirit. Receive him, O Lord, according to your word and promise which says, Ask and it will be given you, seek and you will find, knock and it will be opened unto you, and grant that he may obtain the everlasting blessing of this heavenly washing, and come to the kingdom which you have promised, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. When a child is baptized into the Christian faith, that child, in this case, call it, becomes a living part of the body of Christ. He becomes a part of us, and we become a part of him. As a church, it is our responsibility to care for the spiritual life of Colin, and we do so by establishing quality Sunday school programs, youth programs, and the like. We also fulfill our responsibility by ministering to the parents, to uh, Stephanie and Kyle, and doing all that we can to support them in their Christian parenting. And finally, and this is for you, Tim, and, and Megan in particular, finally, we set apart special people to act as Christian sponsors for Colin. These sponsors function in a special way that is not practical for the entire body of Christ. Namely, they make Colin a regular part of their prayer life. They help him remember his baptism, possibly through special gifts or cards on every uh, August 20th, to help him remember his spiritual baptism as much as his, uh, his uh, beginning of his life, his birthday. Uh, if you give him a gift or something, as he gets older, maybe give him a call, happy baptismal birthday. Um, and um, they act as a living testimony to the baptism. In fact, if he has sponsors, he has to be baptized. You don't have baptismal sponsors, if you weren't baptized, makes sense. And should Colin lose his parents, they do all that is possible to see to it that he's brought up in the Christian faith. Tim and Megan, you have consented to be Colin's sponsors. If it is your intention to gladly and willingly fulfill the special responsibility of a baptismal plan, then answer yes with the help of God. Yes. It is by the power of the Holy Spirit that faith comes alive in all of our hearts. And we believe in God's promise that it is his will for children to share in this life-giving faith. And thus we speak together the Apostles' Creed, that confession of faith which we believe that even now the Holy Spirit is working in the heart of Colin. And what I'd like you to do, and I should have had you do this before, there in the hymnal, if you get a hymnal, I'll get a hymnal, um, there is in the um, back of it the Apostles' Creed. So I'm going to give you a hymnal. Make me know it by heart. Those of you that know my heart, go for it. Um, I don't trust my mind anymore, so I don't go for it. And you'll pull back. Everybody find it, or maybe you did, or maybe you're going to trust in your memory. So, 
sorry that I didn't have this ready ahead of time. Page 1023. Oh, this is a Bible. <laughs> this is a Bible. There's none. Here's the Bible. Okay, now we'll try it again. So, in the early church, when adults were baptized, they were taken through a period of instruction. And when they confess their faith, they confess their faith in terms of their faith in God, the triune God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. As time went by, the church in Rome decided to use that as a part of their worship. And it was changed a little bit, but over time, it has become what we know as the Apostles' Creed. So this is what we're baptizing Colin into. We share together. I believe in God, God the Father, Father Almighty, Almighty maker, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ, our little Son, our Lord, Lord who was conceived, conceived by, by the Holy Spirit. Spirit. Born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. He will come to judge the great and dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay, now if the other kids would like to come up, you want to come up and see? I'm afraid it's a little bit high. Come on up, girls. Come on, guys. And get to see. I baptize you in the name of the Father and of the Son, yeah, I know, <laughs> and the Holy Spirit. Amen. That's all there is to it. Now, I am going to ask you kids to help out here. So, I would like one of you, let's see, which one is, which one is Zoe? Are you Zoe? If you'll hold that, that gives goes to your brother, okay? And Mia. Where's me? Yeah, I want you. I want you. I want you to hold this box. This has a a, a a thing in it that looks like a shell. Kind of looks like this, and that's for Colin as well. And I'm just going to ask you to hold. If you put it together later, I ask you to hold the whole box, okay? Uh, and and um, as a symbol of the flame of faith that is now alive in Colin's heart, we light the baptismal candle. And I'm going to ask, no, well, I don't think I want to ask any of you guys. <laughs> so, um, and I'll ask you, if you take it, Megan. And, um, and then I encourage you guys, each uh, August 20th, light like the baptismal candle and help him to remember his baptism. If you would now give the baptized child to his parents. And let me have a special prayer for him. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, the Lord Jesus Christ, who has begotten you, calling again of water and spirit, and has forgiven you all your sins, strengthen you with his grace, and to life everlasting, peace be with you. Amen. And that concludes our service. You're welcome. Yay.